So before I talk about the submarine issue, let me give you a little background story because it goes back all the way to the Titanic. So on the Titanic, there were some extremely wealthy passengers, the likes of JP Morgan, John Rockefeller, and the Rothschilds. But then we have Jacob Astor, who was the wealthiest man alive at that time. He owned about 40% of all mortgages, and he was a Freemason who opposed the idea of a central bank. Whereas JP Morgan, the Rockefeller, and the Rothschilds strongly supported the idea of a central bank. So Jacob Astor was the only one standing in the way of a central bank at that time. There were other wealthy men like Benjamin Guggenheim and Issa Strauss who also opposed the idea and were in the Titanic as well. So what happened is the morning the Titanic was supposed to set sail, JP Morgan, the Rothschilds and others quietly exited the ship without any explanation. If you watched my video, We Are Slaves to the System, you would know that the Titanic was planned and it was shown to us countless times through predictive programming. There's a novel from 1898 titled The Wreck of the Titan or Futility. The book is about a giant unsinkable ship with not enough lifeboats that crashes into an iceberg and sinks 400 nautical miles from Newfoundland. What was the ship's name? The Titan. Sound familiar? Where the Titanic, a giant unsinkable ship, crashes into an iceberg and also sinks 400 nautical miles from Newfoundland. So back to my story, five days later the Titanic slams into an iceberg and it sinks. And even though Jacob Astor was the wealthiest man in the world, he still couldn't find a seat and a lifeboat and he ends up sinking with the ship along with the other wealthy men. Issa Strauss and Benjamin Guggenheim. Shortly after, these guys become the wealthiest men in the world and the year after that, they created the Federal Reserve Bank, paving the way to print money out of thin air and completely control our monetary system. We can clearly see that this was all strategically planned for a sinister purpose because it's not a coincidence that the owner of the Titanic ship was JP Morgan himself. He knew exactly what he was doing. He cancelled his plan and got off the Titanic just three hours before its departure. How convenient is it that he cancelled his plan to get off the cruise while his direct oppositions were exclusively invited onto the Titanic and all met their end. You see, these people in the higher ups, whenever they have any kind of opposition, they eliminate them at any means and they call it a terrible accident. Now that I've given you the background, we have kind of a similar situation with this Titan submarine issue. As we all know, just recently, the Ocean Gate Titan submarine that contained five people traveled 12,000 feet underwater to visit the Titanic wreckage and it lost communication with those on land and it was said that it got stuck and it blew up. So here's something interesting. The Ocean Gate CEO who was on board on the Titan and passed away on that day, he was married to Wendy Rush. Well, who's Wendy Rush? Wendy is actually a direct descendant of a wealthy couple that passed away on the Titanic. Now, something more interesting is that a billionaire by the name of Jay Bloom was supposed to be on the Titan that day. Instead of Shazada, Dawood and his son, Jay Bloom called off the trip two days before and the tickets were then sold to Shahzada instead. What's interesting about this is that Shah Zada was actually connected to the World Economic Forum. He was a member of the World Economic Forum's family business community. For those who aren't aware, the World Economic Forum is pushing for something called the Great Reset, which is being compared to the New World Order. But we're not done yet. When I looked into Ocean Gate, I discovered that the Rothschilds are actually connected to the company. David D. Rothschild joined the Ocean Gates Board of Directors back in 2012. For a long time, it is said that the Rothschilds benefited greatly from the Federal Reserve Bank, just like JP Morgan did. Already seems kind of fishy to me that not only are the Rothschilds involved, but also someone a part of the World Economic Forum. Too much is going on just for this to be a tragic accident. Plus, is it a coincidence that this whole event was foreshadowed by both The Simpsons and The Family Guy? Hey, I'm filled with joy. 
Searching for treasure with my long-lost son. My dream for each of you is that you find the happiness I feel today. These waters contain some of Mother Nature's most stunning creatures. The treasure of Piso Mahado! Where did Mason go? That must be him over there. In the Family Guy episode, we see Stewie and Brian get into a submersible and travel to the Titanic wreckage to pant a billionaire who was underwater. Stewie and Brian accidentally take out the billionaire when they try to pant him. Again, they show the submersible diving to the Titanic wreckage and it ending in tragedy. It does appear the elite once again used their media to foreshadow what was soon to come. You see, this is that predictive programming I was talking about. They always foreshadow these things in form of entertainment. But now the question that comes up is why were these men taken out? Either it was a distraction from other things that are happening or these men were also opposing the plans of the elite. We know that those who run our world have no problem sacrificing their own to get what they desire. What do you think? Is it all just a coincidence or was it really a setup? <laughs> 